All right, today I want to talk about immutability in JavaScript. So what does immutability mean and how does it pertain specifically to JavaScript? A lot of people get confused when they're first starting out in JavaScript and think, okay, if I use let, I'm allowed to change my variable. If I use const, I'm not allowed to change it. But that's not strictly true. Const is not the same thing as immutable. Const means I'm not allowed to reassign something. So here I created the variable log and I've assigned it to the console.log function. So this is now like a pointer at this function. It means I cannot now come in here and assign it to something else. That is going to cause an error. So if I try to run this, there it is. We get this big error inside here saying type error, assignment to constant variable. That is what const does. It means you're not allowed to reassign the variable. When it comes to things like arrays and objects down here, here's an array. If I wanted to change it, I could. I can say array item number zero is now that. And if I log that out, we're going to see that it did actually change this there is the new value at the beginning of this array. So const does not prevent us from mutating the array or mutating an object. All const does is say, once you've assigned something to this, you're not allowed to make this variable point at something else. So that's what const does. Immutability is you're not allowed to change the contents. I can't add something in here. I can't take something out. I can't change the value of something in here. Or for an object, same thing. I cannot change any of these properties. I'm not allowed to add a property. I can't remove a property. I can't change the value of a property. That would be immutable. JavaScript divides everything between primitive and object. So the primitives. Those are strings, numbers, booleans, null, undefined, string, big int. So we have um, this collection of primitives. Primitives are things that are just values. That's all they are. It's just a value. Take the number five, for example. It cannot be something else. You can't change five into something else. It will always be the number five. Objects, however, Everything that's not a primitive in JavaScript is an object. Arrays are objects. Objects are objects. Functions are objects. Those are mutable. Those, we can change the contents, do whatever we want, regardless of whether I'm using var let or const to assign this to a, some variable name. It is something that I can change. So arrays are mutable. Objects are mutable. Now, if we want to change something inside of here, great, we can do that. If we want to protect this, if we want to stop somebody changing the contents here, what we can do is there is actually a method called freeze. And then you pass in the object that you want. So there we go. I've passed my array into that method. What I have done now is I have said that this array is not allowed to change. Its properties, its values, nothing can change about this. I can still write out the object, so log that, we write it out. Okay, it's the original array. If I try to change something inside of here, if we did what we did before, number zero equals some other value, it's still the same thing. Now, if you are running in strict mode, this will actually generate an error for us. It'll say, no, 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 you're not allowed to do that. It's an error. You've tried to change something that's frozen. You've made it immutable. So that's what we're doing here. We're making something immutable, changing the values, changing the properties, changing the contents. That means it's mutable. If you cannot do those things, it is immutable. So why is this important? Well, sometimes you want to be saving memory. Now, JavaScript, because of this whole mutable thing, um, it's always trying to find ways to save memory. This has to do with the shallow versus deep copying. 
So here I'll just comment these three things out. Shallow versus deep copy. And I do have a video on this. If you look at the link up at the top there. So there is a video on that. Um, what this means, the shallow versus deep copy, if you don't know what that means, anything at the top level, if I'm dealing with a bunch of primitives here and I copy this into something else, so let's say um, let array two is equal to this. I'm just copying these values over. Okay, great. If I were to say array dot from, what I'm doing is I'm copying those values. So I'm creating a new array from this thing using those values. The values get copied over, no problem. If I just left it like this, as I started out, what I'm doing is this is an object somewhere in memory. I've just created a new pointer to that same location in memory. I have not created a copy of this. If I were to now say the first element inside array two is some different value, I'm not just changing what looks like to be the second array, I'm actually changing this original one. So if I was to write out the original one, I've changed the original array by assigning a new value to this one. This is just being passed through to the original because array two is just a pointer to that. These objects to save memory, they're just sort of held in one place. Now, if we were inside of here to put something else, let's say I want to add obj into here. So I've put it right at the very end of this array. This object is now part of the array. It is the sixth item in my array. If we run this through here, oh, I gotta save it. If we run this through, there you can see that it is added to the array. But it's not a copy. It is just a pointer to this original object. So if I try to change something in here, I'm actually going to be changing this original object. So I don't want to spend too much time on the shallow versus deep thing. Um, you can watch that whole video to, to get a sense of that. So we have objects and primitives. The primitives are immutable. Objects are mutable, meaning that they change. Now, this has implications for when you are using the methods. I was using the push method right here. You can see array, push, and I pass something in. I'm actually mutating the original object when I do that. But not all array methods do that. We've got sort, push, reverse. These methods all do change the original array. If I use something like concat or array from or map, I am actually creating a brand new array. I'm not affecting the original one. And if you go, if you use uh, MDN, if you're in here and you look at the methods, so sort was one, you can see that they're saying, let me zoom in a little bit here for you, method sorts the elements of an array in place. So if you see in place, that means it's changing the original array. If you see something about it mutates the original array. So it's making changes to the original. Other methods like concat or map, if we look at these ones, they'll say that it doesn't change it or instead it returns a new array. So you have to be careful when dealing with objects and arrays with the methods that you're using. Be sure that you understand whether you're affecting the original array or whether you are actually generating a new one and the original array is left untouched. We're not doing anything to that original array. Okay, so we have a mixture of methods that are mutating and non-mutating. 
So I mentioned that we have object.freeze, which makes our objects immutable. There's a similar method called object.seal. This method means you're not allowed to add things, but you're still allowed to change them. So the object is sort of in a quasi-immutable state. You can't add anything new, but you're still allowed to change the stuff that's there. So it's sort of an in-between state. Now, immutability has become something that's a little bit more important to understand ever since JavaScript started leaning more and more towards functional programming. Functional programming uses methods like map. So I've got an array and I could call the map method. This is going to run through the items in your array and for each one of them it's going to return some new value. So here we've got numbers. If I did this, what's happening is I'm looking at each one of these and I'm calling this function on each item. So I'm multiplying each one by two. So this becomes two, this becomes six, this becomes 10, 14, 18. But I'm not modifying, I'm not mutating the original array. I do get back a new one. So this returns a brand new one without doing anything to this. It does not mutate this in any way. It gives me a new one. And the fact that I can do that means that I can chain on other methods. So the filter method does the same thing. It loops through an array, whatever array is in front of it, and it will generate a brand new array for me. And then we could do a reduce, which is another method, which is not mutating the original array. So all these things get to be chained together and we still get to keep our original values because maybe those original values are needed someplace else in your code. That's why we want to maintain this. Something else that we can use, something that uh, I mentioned that I was going to do a video on proxies quite a while ago, but uh, I haven't got around to that yet. I will do that. If you're one of the people that wait, is waiting for that, I am sorry that it's taken me this long. Proxies are a way to have a function that intercepts changes to an object. So I could create a proxy for this object and say, hey, if somebody tries to change the value of job, I want to intercede and do something. I want to be able to prevent a change to that. So you could use proxies as a way to sort of make an object immutable. You're protecting the object from being mutated, and maybe you want to selectively protect certain properties. Now, if you do want to make your objects immutable at some point. There are libraries that will let you do that. So you can call methods to make changes, and instead of changing the original object, these methods will give you back a new mutated version of the original, but it leaves the original behind. So there's a library by Facebook called Immutable. There's another library out there called Immer which uh, is also a library for doing immutable objects. And right now there is a proposal for a change to JavaScript to add two new data types called record and tuple or tuple. Um, these are an object that is immutable and this is an array that is immutable. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video um, probably in the next few days on this topic specifically, this new thing. Uh, right now it's only at stage two. It's going to be coming, I would probably guess that late 2021, early 2022, that we are going to see these actually in the browser so that we can use them. Um, there is a way that we can test and play around with them now, so I'll be showing you that in the, uh, in the video. Okay, so that is immutable. Um, talked about a lot of different things here. Hopefully the concept makes sense to you. Um, I mean, in a nutshell, in one sentence, it's just an immutable object is one that you cannot change its properties or values. That's it. But it is not the same thing as const. 
All right, so I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Um, I will answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.